So Christ exalted is the first C. Um, now, we know that not everyone who comes here is a Christian. We understand that. But we are coming from that perspective and seeking to share the love of Christ, just like the churches did when they established hospitals in the 1930s, 40s, and so on. Um, hello, hello. Hello, people out there. Uh, this is uh, the podcast that we started, and we're calling it uh, Living Sensibly Podcast. Uh, today, we're starting a new series, kind of. Uh, we're going over the origins, you know, the title of origins. But first, before we even get to anything, why origins, Amos? So, um, Elias was uh, thinking about, you know, a good name for a series about the beginnings of the school and just our heart for education. And so, he came up with the word origins, and I thought that's a good place to start. Uh, why Why do we have a school? Why, do we, why are we involved in education? What's the long-term goal? Those are some of the issues we'll be addressing in this series. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I was just like, at this, at this like a precise moment when I was preparing for this podcast, actually, I was like, why origins? I'm like, origins kind of gives us a foundation, you know, the basis to which where we can build up and yeah. go from there. So, yes, sir. Uh, that was kind of profound. Um, so, um, now that we talked about kind of what's the heart of this podcast, I would like to hear how did the whole start? Like, how? Do, what is the origin story of Lifestem Academy? So Lifestem Academy, um, if you don't know, is a, is a school in Moorhead, Minnesota, and then also has a, a satellite campus at, in Grand Forks starting up. Uh, but the, my heart for education has been there for a very long time. I remember as a young child, even when I was six, seven years old, um, you know, just liking, I loved paper and pens and trying to do math problems and um, trying to simplify it, um, explaining how to do math. And so there's always been that passion for learning, uh, and I thank God for that. So we moved from northern Nigeria to southern Nigeria in 1994 and in my uh, elementary school days we called it primary school I went to Air Force primary school I just um, education was just dear to my heart and I always sought to do my best and um, yeah so that was something I loved and so then I, I, I finished elementary school went to high school was involved heavily there and um, I just had a heart for young people and just inspiring them to live lives that made sense and so I graduated in 2005 um, and then uh, came to the United States in 2007. In between that time, I was giving a lot of talks in different schools. And the goal was always the same, inspire them to excellence. And so when I graduated college in 2010 with a degree in chemistry and philosophy, and someday we could talk a little bit about my specific education courses. But when I graduated, I taught for two years at a private school. And during that time, I started thinking about what would it look like to have a school similar to the one I went to growing up in Nigeria. Um, very, you know, in good workload in science. I mean, this business of one science class in 10th grade, one science class 11th, one science class in 12th, that's just too low of a bar for me when I think of um, the, the expectations. And I just thought, why don't you allow an interaction of multiple science courses at the same time, chemistry and physics, and sometimes even biology uh, along the way. So this vision around 2012, 2013 was boiling in my heart. And so I started a tutoring center in 2013, and I've worked with students in different capacities with tutoring, but with tutoring, you're kind of like the add-on. You're not the focus. You're not the, 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 the thing that can really help that student in certain ways. You're just trying to sometimes help students with homework. Um, and, and I just, I wanted to do more than that. Now, through the years, it's been boiling in my heart, but I was waiting for the logistics to work out, for the funds to work out, all of that kind of stuff. And in 2022, it became clear on January 1st that this is the year. Um, and so, you know, by God's grace, we, we went out and, um, Started, you know, we started sharing about different aspects of education, and by June, July, August, we we found a location, and by August twenty second, twenty twenty two, we opened our doors. So the the passion and the heart has been there for a long time, but I feel like by God's grace, everything came together more so in twenty twenty two. Of course, there are pieces that still need to be ironed out better and better, but we've started, and we're by God's grace, we're going to keep uh, seeking to make it uh, the best experience possible as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's profound. That's profound. And if you watch this on YouTube, you can actually see uh, the link below to the video he made in uh, the beginning of the year 2022, where he describes the vision that he has. And um, it's actually marvelous to see that six months later, it actually became a reality, right? We like thank God. Yeah. In miraculous ways. Yeah. So that is profound. We uh, thank but, God. Yeah. But Amos, um, a question I have for you. So 
Um, what are some of the core um, ideals of Life, Life STEM Academy? Well, one of the main things is, uh, you know, we've called it the five C's, even though now I think it's actually six C's, but, but we'll, make, <laughs> we'll make one of the C's double up there. But, but the, we really want Christ to be exalted. We want to uh, provide the best quality education while keeping uh, Christ as center of, you know, of my life and in the life of uh, those who are trying to run the program. We want, we want to focus on Christ. He's the one who has given us the opportunities and the privileges and the gifts we have. So Christ exalted is the first C. Um, now, we know that not everyone who comes here is a Christian. We understand that, but we are coming from that perspective and seeking to share the love of Christ, just like the churches did when they established hospitals in the 1930s, 40s, and so on. Because if you really think about it, um, you know, the Methodist Church of Texas, so I mean, sorry, the Methodist Hospital of Texas, so <clears throat> different, um, you know, churches, I, I think that they started out with, with uh, you know, just serving humanity, and that's number one, <clears throat> Christ exalted. Number two is content mastered. We want people to master the content, and then we want uh, character to be developed and culture to be transformed. Um, we want career preparation, and uh, and those that so again, Christ exalted, um, content mastered, career preparation, character development, culture transformed. Those are elements that we want to see <clears throat> at the school. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, those those points are really really good, and I hope you kids out there are paying attention. And yes, the parents as well can uh, continue to reiterate those points to the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I heard this once in the, one of the meetings that we had the staff members uh, in which you said that uh, uh, the reason why we're here is to repair the ruins of the culture. Yep. And that is actually, actually being a phrase that actually sti like a st <coughs> stuck into my head and I could, just couldn't get it out. Well, like, what made you say that and, and why is it that we're here? So when I talk about the, you know, again, the churches serving their communities back in the day and serving all people, just showing them the love of Christ, um, I think about our culture right now, and I think of Nehemiah's day, and there's just ruins. There's there's confusion. There's uh, truth not being taught on several issues. And by God's grace, we want to repair the ruins of the day. We want to help people build their lives on truth, because a society that tries to build its life on relativism is not going to flourish. So repairing the ruins is looking at what are the elements of society that are not in place. Um, biblical values need to be in place uh, to live a life that makes sense. And so those are the areas where the school is trying to step in and by the grace of God help people to build their lives on truth so our young people are bombarded with distractions they are bombarded with lies um, and we want to equip them to to stand for truth in the day and age they live in yeah yeah that is good can you give us one example that we've been doing that has been different from most schools in the area well, we really expect our students um, to become like the Isaac Newtons, like the Catherine Johnsons of Hidden Figures, like Michael Faraday, like James Clerk Maxwell. We teach about these names. I want my students to know all these people and more. Uh, why? Because I'm not, I don't believe in grade-based learning as a fundamental approach. The, one of the reasons we use grade-based learning is because it's cheaper. I think we need to, uh, it's cheaper, it seems to make some sense, but here's the deal. Some kids are in seventh grade and they're ready for high school. There's no reason they should be doing seventh grade science or seventh grade math. So I have seventh graders who are in Algebra 2 going into pre-calc this year. I, I'm not going to stop you because you're in a certain grade level. I'm going to give you what you need, where you're at to keep moving forward. And if you're uh, misbehaving in terms of I don't want to move forward and so on and so forth, we're going to keep seeking to inspire you. Because what people fundamentally need in education today is inspiration, not information. There's information everywhere. Google, here, there, and the other place. However, the question is, are you inspired to make, to take effort and to take initiative to apply yourself to excellence and be the best you can be in every subject that you're learning? That's what we're about. And so I'm going to have ninth graders who are in calculus too, and that's just fine. I'm going to have 12th graders graduating with 21 credits of math. That's just fine. I don't believe we need to follow any sort of, oh, it's sixth grade, so you only do ABC. So that's number one. We really are trying to tailor the education to every child, custom-made education with the help of their parents, right? We're partnering with homeschool families, and then we also have some students who are not homeschooled, but we want to work with the families. I email families regularly. What, how's, this, how's this going? And they tell me, oh, he, this child really loves history. Okay, well, let's give them another resource, another project. Oh, this child really loves chemistry, and they love physical science. Let's give them both. We have students who are doing chemistry and physical science. We have students who are doing chemistry and physics at the same time. Um, as I said, we, we, we're excited. And, and one other thing we do is we don't really believe in summer off from math. That's, that's the worst idea. 
idea, especially in America. It's just a terrible idea. We already have a country who, which is ranked as one of the worst in math. And now you're giving three months off from something kids are terrible at. How do you expect to become good? It just doesn't make any sense. So what we do is we inspire them through teaching of math history. We have books on math history. This is James Clerk Maxwell's book, actually, I have here with me. So my kids get to see. James Clerk Maxwell is the one who did great work in the 1800s that gave rise to electrical engineering, uh, a lot of electrical engineering. But so we, we have resources to help them through the summer. Math history, math applications. It doesn't have to be just do number one, two, three, four, five. It's also a, a, engaging and encouraging stuff that inspires them to want to do the math. And then we give them the resources to do the math, right? We're available for them all summer because we don't want them to fall behind. So then in the fall, guess what? We're going to gain ground. So we hope to give our students four years in addition. Like we want them to be four years ahead of their peers in mathematics. So we are starting, of course, with our first year now, but we're going to work our way back to, to, to helping the younger students to get this vision of I do not take a break from a skill that is necessary that you need to keep working on, right? So I don't take three months off. Keep working on that skill, and Life STEM Academy will help you. So that's how some of the ways that were different. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's profound. But uh, I do think like some of the kids out there watching this are gonna start thinking or listen to this. They're gonna start thinking, well, well, if I'm not gonna have a summer off, I'm gonna just gonna be studying. That's gonna be too hard, too much. But so my question is now, like, how? So what is the plan for breaks? Is there gonna be breaks, or there's just no breaks and just study from day one to of summer and the last day of summer? So they actually get throughout the school year, they get eight weeks of breaks. First of all, most of our oh. students have breaks spread out about eight weeks. I mean, there's one week off in November, one week off October, three weeks off December, one week off February, March, April, right? So every month they're getting chan uh, opportunities. Number two, we don't do homework really. We we don't give homework. So our students when they leave here are going home, helping their families. Stay Staying refreshed. When they come here, we're using deliberate practice to zoom in. And by the way, if you haven't read the book called Peak by Anders Ericsson, he talks about deliberate practice and how they're able to cover a lot of content in a short amount of time. That's part of what we do with our students. We have a path we're going on. You're going to calculus and we're going to help you get there with efficiency. So that's number one. They get breaks throughout the year. Number two, in the summer, all I'm asking for is like 45 minutes to an hour a day. That's it. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for doing school all day. I'm just saying take about 40 minutes to refresh your memory on your skills. Uh, here's a few practice problems. Yeah, that's it. If you want to do more, great. But that's all I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that 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 is really good. So, uh, if I understand this correctly, so students are gonna have somewhat of forty-five something minutes when they get here during the summer to study. Yep. And then uh, they have they can have their whole the rest of the day off to themselves. So imagine if they just did from nine to nine forty-five and then move on with your day. Oh, that's good. That's, that's to maintain your skill. Now, of course, as I said, we want to have, by God's grace, I want to see Nobel laureates come out of our schools. I want to see the, I want to see concepts in math that are taught in 50 years that come out of our students today. So how is that going to happen? We're going to have some of those students in the summer who will come in for advanced math training, and we'll do our best to provide that for them. Yeah, well, that's really, really that's really, really good. Um, one of the things that I also, I've also noticed so far is that uh, you do mention a lot of by God's grace. Is there some order of of a connection between the, the Life STEM Academy and, and God and religion, Christianity? Yeah, yeah. Like, as I said, I am a Christian and I I, um, I, I believe in truth. I believe in God's word, uh, the Bible. Um, and I, I teach from that perspective. So that's where, you know, Life STEM Academy is coming from. Um, I, I believe, again, you think of Oxford and Cambridge and, and, and Harvard and a lot of schools started with a faith foundation. Unfortunately, a lot of them have moved away from that. But we want to establish that that is our premise. Education Education cannot be neutral. Uh, is, you cannot have a neutral perspective on education because you have to answer the question of what is a human fundamentally. And I'm saying a human is one who is created in the image of God. And that's why I can expect high things from the human because I believe they're created in the image of God. So please, for those who think that, oh, can't you just have a high quality education without a faith element? I'm sorry, there is no neutral education. It's either based on circular humanism or it's based on faith in something. And ours is based on faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, that's profound. That's profound. Um, if you didn't know, Amos here is also an apologist. <laughs> I've listened to him speaking at a church. And uh, it has been fun, you know, getting to know more about how science actually works well with God's design. Um, you know, and how some of the uh, philosophical implications that evolution has actually really fall really, really short. So uh, perhaps we'll get the time. We'll have a time to talk about more of those things. But for today, let's move on to the topic with the, with the topic of origins. Yeah. So um, since we talked about some of the origins, some of the past, um, what do you have to say about the future? What are we headed from here? 
So by the grace of God, I will be uh, equipping and training and having uh, principals uh, in the Moorhead and Grand Forks location. I'll be doing teacher training. And my goal is actually to step back and help with starting uh, STEM academies, live STEM academies. Um, and this is part of an umbrella. The umbrella name for that is the Vision Inspirational STEM Academies. I would love to see schools pop, you know, coming up all around America and the world. Um, you know, in Nigeria, we have a project already happening with uh, Wilberforce Euler Academy. And so we want to Basically, I just want to focus on helping uh, schools get started, providing them with education training, and just realizing, uh, helping the schools to realize that we're in a new era when it comes to uh, information delivery, right? Because Google is there. There's information and all that stuff out there. The question now just becomes, how do you inspire students to care? So that's what I'll be hoping to focus my time on. My prayer is that we'll get thousands of schools started all around the world that are focused on helping children develop their talents that God has given them and helping them to flourish, helping them to be who God made them to be. So that's my goal in the future. And so by God's grace, um, by this fall, we should have three schools running. Um, as I said, each one will have their principals, each one will have their teachers, um, you know, so that, and then there would be someone who, you know, works in the sort of the business side, the, what you do, right? So Elias works for, a, uh, works for a sort of business management, economics, uh, sort of figuring all those things out, marketing. And so I would love to see more people on your team helping establish these programs, giving it structure and all that needs to be done. And my role by God's grace, I, I I love starting things. I love getting things off the ground. I love dreaming. And, and I would love to partner with people who bring in the structure. And I just bring in some of the inspiration, the dreams. And hopefully, by God's grace, we'll get funded and keep opening schools. So that's my hope is we need a new kind of school for this generation. And it's not what we've been doing in the past. A lot of these kids are apathetic, bored out of their minds, and we need something different. And that's what we're providing. We're taking the life of, I think of Isaac Newton and some of these guys and how they were educated. And we're bringing it to the 21st century to provide the best quality education possible. Yeah. Well, that is good. That is really, really good. It's a good answer. Um, yeah. But today we're almost out of time here and I would love to continue this, but uh, we're trying to make each episode very, very meaningful and very, very precise on the topics that we're talking about. So today, this was just an introduction to the topic of origins. We'll have more coming up next week. Perhaps we will dive a little bit more, a little bit deeper into some of the things that Amo just like quickly run through it. And um, you get to see, you get to know more of like, you know, how did it all go started? You know, did you have any doubts when you, when you started all of this? Was it like something clear in a dream? It just dreamed that, hey, I'm going to start a lifetime academy, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? So we'll get to see some more of that. Uh, but for today, we have perhaps we have some special announcements. I heard of the London trip coming up. Yeah, so the London trip, uh, quickly, let me just address that. So we, um, before I started Lifestyle Academy, I already was talking about, the, you know, before our first day of school, I talked about the idea of going to Europe, um, sort of an, a, a, a school trip. Uh, initially, I was going to try for, we we're going to do Germany so we could go to where the printing press, you know, the so we're visiting the printing press location, uh, f you know, from the Gutenberg press all the way nice. to uh, Martin Luther where he did his 95 theses. So I wanted to do a trip there, but with some of what was going on in Europe, I thought it's best to pause on the Germany side. And so I took a different route to England. So my brother lives in England and uh, he will be guiding a trip and uh, helping us with a trip there. Uh, he's lived there for about 20 years, works for uh, Virgin Trains, which is the tr a big train system around England. And so our goal is to actually go to Oxford and Cambridge for, for uh, it's a seven day trip. So we leave on Friday, we come back Friday uh, at the end of April. Um, several things on the trip. Number one, of course, we'll get to engage with the best university as, as one of the top universities in the world at Oxford. We'll hopefully meet with some Christian apologists there. We'll get to get a tour of the campus and, and uh, of course, visit London itself. Um, my, my hope is about two days we'll go to London from Oxford back and forth. And then we actually, there's a gentleman who has started schools all around the world and we will try to schedule a meeting with him on Sunday evening during that trip. So people will get to meet this gentleman who started schools all over, whether it's Asia, Africa, uh, Europe, and we'll meet with him and it'll be a great time so it's educational but th there's also opportunities to learn i will be recording some videos while we're there um videos concerning um isaac newton videos concerning james clark maxwell so i'll be doing like a documentary brief documentary while we're in england as well so yeah we're hoping to go with about 15 to you know 25 people we'll see um i'll be sending out some final announcements this week and we'll see how many people are ready to roll yeah yeah well so, that's good yeah. i hope you guys are listening up um this is gonna be fun yeah i I would wish I would be I would be there going there, you know, uh, getting to meet John Lennox. If I'm not wrong, he still teaches at Oxford. Right? John Lennox is at Oxford. Oh, yes, yes. I yeah. Think it would be nice to get, getting to know some if, more of his insight and math and yeah. and apologetics. 
you know, for yeah. Christianity. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, one final announcement I have to make is the, the second episode is coming up a week after this one is released to you. And, uh, yeah, you can expect real great things, you know. And should you have any topics, ideas, questions that you would like us to talk about, you can send it on the on the, through email, yep. right? Should we just Emo- use... Emil Star for one at gmail.com. Yeah, it should be right there, right there, okay? So um, I hope you have fun, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Have a blessed day. Thanks, Elias.